I'm Leo Walder for Kit Guru, and this laptop, once again, is the Gigabyte Aero 15X V8. I say once again because I reviewed it within the past weeks, and we've run into a little bit of snag in my review, which is to do with the cooling. Now, when I reviewed the laptop, uh, I was addressing a number of new features. So, in particular, the 6-core 8th uh, gen Intel Coffee Lake processor, that's obviously the big new feature. It also packs a GTX 1070 Max-Q graphics chip, which we have seen before, but still it's a good one. And then uh, we've also got a 144Hz panel, and it's a 15.6-inch panel IPS in a tiny bezel, so the lid looks pretty much all screen. Uh, I mentioned the cooling almost in passing because really I was focusing on fan noise rather than how the cooling actually works and that's caused us some ructions in the YouTube comments. So I'm going to address the thermals and the airflow in some depth here, which is something we don't generally do a laptop, so it's actually also a point of interest. The worst sin a laptop can commit is to hit 100 degrees under extreme load because that means it'll shut down, but 90 degrees is where throttling occurs, so if it passes 90, that's bad. What we expect to see is a laptop internally will idle around the 40 something degrees depending on ambient temperatures and such like under extreme load and i'm talking a to 64 type extreme load you will expect it to go up to 80 something but it'll fall shy of the 90 and that's all that really matters uh, and then the trade-off from that is how uh, much the fans have to ramp up to keep the chips under control uh, so as long as it's shy of 90 and the noise isn't massively excessive i, I wouldn't like to say I don't care how it behaves, but it, it's not really that important. As long as it works and it works correctly, we're happy. And ideally, it's quiet with it. With this laptop, we've got two chips that require cooling. We've got the CPU and the GPU. They're located in the center. We've got two coolers. They're out in the outer corners. The easiest thing is to pull off the bottom cover and just show you what's going on inside. With the laptop flipped over, we can see the uh, cooling vents. Ignore these stickers, I'll explain those shortly. So I remove this small handful of Torx screws and I take off the cover. Uh, it's worth pointing out these two mesh grills here are not part of the cooling system, they are over the two speakers. So we've got two smallish vents and one great big vent in the middle. We pull off the cover. It has no reflective uh, material inside. You often find bits of foil and such like inside these covers, none here, just the mesh uh, grills for the uh, airflow. And you will note there are two cooling fans. So we've got the CPU, the GPU, two heat pipes going across, obviously. Heat comes from the chips, goes through the heat pipes to the cooling fans, uh, which line up with these intakes here, which means that this uh, great big opening in the center is something of a puzzle. And then the heat is dispersed, let's just say that for the time being. And that's pretty much the end of the story. As to where the heat goes, well now that is part of the question. And this is actually where I managed to trip over my words something horrible during the review. Because as you will see, let's just take that cover off the battery and hold it in place because it's loose. There are no uh, intakes or exhausts on this side or on this side. And at the back, you've got the uh, hinge of the screen in the way. So there's nothing on the back except there is. If you open the laptop, holding the battery in place, there's these vents along here. And we'll ignore these stickers as well because they're part of the uh, same thing. During the course of the review, I run various benchmarks, games, Cinebench and so on, do a battery rundown test. And I also check temperatures of the CPU and the GPU. To do that, I check the ambient temperature, which in this studio is about 17. In my regular office, it's rather warmer at 21. Uh, I've got some monitoring software, HW monitor, GPU Z on the sensor panel. And then over here, I've got ADA64, which will stress the internal components. How you stress your components, uh, that's always a perennial question uh, if you're doing really hardcore stuff such as Prime, uh, if you're uh, using AVX and such like, that'll stress the hardware more sternly than say a games test. ADA64 you can stress both the CPU and the GPU simultaneously. In a sense it's unfair, it's also a worst case scenario, but it's like a practical worst case scenario. Uh, and that gives you numbers, so in this instance the laptop will idle around the 40-ish mark internally, or maybe mid 40s, and it'll run in the low 80s is under extreme load, job done. Get some screen grabs to prove the point, do a graph, we're finished. If you want to really dress it up, you can do some thermal imaging. So this Fleur One camera you'll be familiar with because a bunch of people use them in reviews. They're relatively cheap. I think this cost me about 200 pounds some little while ago, and it plugs into my old uh, uh, Nexus 5 phone. So uh, there we go. 
lovely images. And the clever thing with the FLIR 1, part of the reason it's so popular, is it combines both uh, visible light and also IR. So you get two images overlaid, so you can see the laptop on the screen, you can also see the hotspots. It's not just like this blurry, coloredy map. The downside of the FLIR 1, there are a couple of downsides. One is the, the colour gradients, they, they look really extreme. It looks like you know, parts of it are baking hot and parts of it are icy cold, and, and it's not so. Uh, this laptop is just idling at the moment. The range of temperatures is going to be between 20 on the cooler parts of the keyboard and 30 something towards the hotter parts. If I put my hand up to it, as I am officially a mammal, uh, it's going to go up to 34 or 35. But it looks far hotter than that. And that can be deceptive. So the differential between uh, coolish parts and warmish parts looks like really icy cold and really burning hot. And that's just not so. But it looks pretty. And that's why Fleur 1 is quite appealing to reviewers. Uh, added to that, you have to be careful when you use FLIR 1 because infrared really gets uh, mucked up by things like glass. So if you point a thermal camera at, say, a PC case and you've got a glass panel in the way, the, the figures you'll get will be completely nonsensical. Nonetheless, used with caution, it's a handy little tool and it does generate interesting images. And that's why I've got it there. But I didn't major on infrared in the review and for good reason. Nonetheless, that's what this laptop looks like when it's idling. And if I stress it, you'll see that uh, various parts get hotter exactly as you'd expect. Now the chips are under here, the coolers are there, so common sense says it's going to be this area that gets hot and also the lower edge of the screen. That's exactly what happens. Now there are valid questions to be asked about temperatures. For example, does the keyboard get so burningly hot that if you touch it you lose your fingerprints and so on? And the answer is no it doesn't. Uh, when, when the laptop's being stressed it might appear that way but as I say the temperatures are not that high. Uh, uh, while the chips inside are 80 something degree, well the CPU is 80 something, the GPU actually is 74. Various parts of the laptop, uh, like here for example, 48 degrees. Now if you were to hold your fingers to that point for some considerable period of time, perhaps it would get uncomfortable, but why would you do that? Uh, it's not a natural way to use the laptop. So as I say, you need to proceed with caution. It's also worth pointing out that when you look at say the underside of the laptop, you're looking directly at that great big vent which is directly over the CPU and the GPU. So in effect, you're looking directly at the chips or the back of the chips. You're looking at you know, the territory of the chips. So it looks smoking hot. Uh, but what it doesn't tell you when you do this uh, analysis, it doesn't give you any clue of actually how the air is flowing through the laptop. Now, in a sense, that's an irrelevance. But as I raised the point about airflow and cooling noise and fans and such like in the review, I've made a rub from my own back. So it's worth investigating exactly what is going on with airflow in this laptop uh, besides the question of temperatures. How does the air flow through? Where does it come from? Where does it go to? While I remember those numbers on those little stickers are targets for when I was using the FLIR infrared camera to make sure I knew where I was pointing at when I took each of the spot measurements, rather than saying the point behind the keyboard or the point above the screen. I thought, right, if I call it four or five, then I'll know where the heck I'm talking about. So what on earth is this monstrosity? This is a thing I've sort of gashed up so I can see what is going on with airflow, because it is surprising how little air is actually moving around, even when the fans are howling away at maximum speed, as they currently are. So what we've got is quite simply a frame that's suspending some strips of paper. I tried it with bits of knitting wool and such like, didn't move. It took some paper because of the uh, surface area to actually uh, respond. So we've got the underside of the laptop, the fans are howling away, and as the animation that Gigabyte put on their website when this laptop launched, you'll appreciate I didn't see the animation until the product had gone live, uh, we can clearly see, according to Gigabyte, the fans are sucking in air through the three vents on the underside and expelling the air through the vents on the sort of top surface at the back in front of the screen. So these three vents here are clearly intake. I'm going to stop talking so my breath doesn't move the paper and I'm going to simply move the paper towards the vents and you can see what you think is going on. And I think we can agree that the uh, vents by the fans, the paper does indeed get drawn in. And around the great big vent here, very little is happening. 
this is working as you know in, in real world but here's where I made a slip in my review I mean a fundamental slip I said that air was being exhausted from the underside and I deduced that by literally holding a piece of paper over the vents and over this big vent in particular and I could feel it moving away from the vent very, very slightly so I said air was being exhausted which was incorrect the reason it's incorrect is this look at the orientation of the laptop ordinarily of course the laptop sits horizontally these are on the underside which means that the hot air that's inside wants to rise I've stitched the thing over 90 degrees so they're now beyond the horizontal uh, convection conduction radiation hot air is spilling out of this vent very slightly it is rising and that's why there is some motion in this territory but very very slightly because I've got the laptop as it were the wrong way up so that's my bad I got that wrong but that vent there in the great scheme of things is doing next to nothing my view and this is purely a view, I'm waiting to hear back from Gigabyte, is that quite clearly these are the intakes for the fans. This is uh, really just like disaster relief. In the event you put the laptop down on soft furnishings or something, or indeed your legs, you're always going to get air flowing through the chassis on the intake. You can't simply block these two intakes and starve the laptop of cooling air. That great big vent will allow air to flow. But quite clearly the vents over the fans are the primary intakes. That's the intake side, what about the exhaust? I need the power cord connected to run the laptop in a stress test. I can't do it in this instance because it will interfere with my uh, Frankenstein's frame. So instead I'm just gonna use the function keys to run the fans at full blast. Now, which means that the uh, air that's actually being expelled is cold air rather than hot air. It's close enough to what happens in the real world, but it's not exactly the same as, you know, hot air rises. This is being purely blown by the fans. Nonetheless, it'll do for this test. I'm going to hold the laptop up. I'll stop talking so my breath doesn't play a part, and I'll move it towards the paper as before. And again, it's absolutely at the ends that you see the paper moving, i.e. directly above the two fans. In the middle, almost nothing is going on. And because the air is going up, directly up the screen, you're getting a kind of a motion going on where the paper's sucked into it and is also shimmering around somewhat. Uh, as to whether it's a good idea to have the hot air exhausting directly up the screen, that's a different question. Certainly those thermal images show that the bottom of the screen gets relatively hot. As I say, the FLIR one overemphasizes things. Let's just turn those fans off and let's get this out of the way. Uh, so, my initial review in terms of where the airflow goes, not entirely correct, that's for certain. On the other hand, I'm going to say that uh, gigabyte animation that shows air drafting in the bottom and blowing out, I don't think that's entirely right either. All the airflow is going on around the two fans. Having said all that, going back to the original review, temperatures of the CPU and the GPU are entirely acceptable. As to whether or not you think it's a good idea to have the vents on the underside, and then whether you put it on a table or on your legs or on soft furnishings or whatever, that's entirely a matter for you. I'm not best pleased by the idea, but as I said in the review, it's a very slender chassis. If Gigabyte had the air coming in the sides and exhausting to the rear in the usual way, the air would be passing through some tiny channels and it's bound to be even noisier. It's a trade-off. It's a really slender laptop. It's got some really powerful silicon inside, not GTX 1080 type powerful and desktop CPU powerful, but powerful enough the heat has to go somewhere. I fully understand why Gigabyte has done what they've done. I'm not completely convinced it's the ideal approach, but it's a very sensible compromise, as I said in my original review. Anyway, I did not get my facts straight in the original review about airflow. The temperature figures are absolutely fine uh, and hopefully this has given you more of an insight into what's going on inside the laptop. Certainly it has uh, given me a bit of an eye opener as well. I'm going to approach this differently in future with the reviews. I'm going to replace my Frankenstein frame with something slightly more sophisticated and more repeatable. Uh, but for the moment, if anyone's got any bright ideas what works better than strips of paper, I'm all ears. I am not going to use smoke. I do not want to get smoke inside laptops and here. That would be a bad idea. 
even though it might visually work better. But the bits of paper seem a little bit, you know, basic. Nonetheless, they work and they've shown me some stuff and there we go. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Uh, this is a revisit of the uh, Gigabyte Aero 15X V8.